This is Optimal Startup Daily, episode 823. Eight Ways Doing Less Can Transform Your Work and Life by Leo Babauta of zenhabits.net. And I'm Dan, I'm your host, welcoming you to a brand new year here at Optimal Startup Daily as we enter 2023. And I will be with you every single day of this year to help you optimize your business life. We're gonna hear from Leo Babauta right now and I'll keep this intro nice and short for you on this weekend episode. And let's get right to it as we optimize your life. Eight Ways Doing Less Can Transform Your Work and Life by Leo Babauta of zenhabits.net. Quote, Perfection is achieved not when there is nothing more to add, but when there is nothing left to take away. End quote. Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. Most productivity blogs and books will teach you how to do more, to get more done, to be more productive. I want to teach you to do less, to get less done, to be less productive. And while I've written about it before, I think it's time we take a look at how this can really change your work life and your life as a whole. Doing less is not about being lazy, though being lazy is a good start. It's about focusing on quality rather than quantity. It's about getting off the hamster wheel of productivity so that you can create something great rather than just being busy. Let's take a few examples. One, a furniture maker can mass produce a ton of cheap furniture that will fall apart within a year. Another craftsman might produce way fewer pieces of furniture, but make them beautifully and solidly so that they'll last for generations. If he makes them well enough, they might even be sought out and remembered for their great design. Two, a programmer can write tens of thousands of lines of code and produce a lot of software that works. A less productive coder can write a tenth of the lines, perhaps even editing down what she writes so that there's less code, but they're better written. This small program might be the most useful thing on many people's computers. Flawless code that just works. And three, a writer can churn out lots of words, hundreds of thousands, if not millions, but have his work read by relatively few. Another writer can write a small but powerful blog post or ebook and have the post be spread by thousands of people. In each case, the person produced less but focused on quality. The impact of the smaller work was higher and thus the time worked was better spent. I'd argue that by focusing on quality, you could work less and still have a higher impact. I've done this in my life. By cutting back on my work hours, I actually get less done but have a higher impact. I should note, this takes courage to do less. You have to shed all the old ideas of working harder and working more and being more productive. You have to forget about what others think about your work habits and instead think about the impact the work has on the world and your life. You have to change the way you do things and that's never easy, but it's worth the effort. Here are some ways this philosophy can change your life and work. One, less hectic, busy schedule, less stress, more peace. Doing less leaves you free to schedule less, leaves more space in your schedule. Work at a more human pace. Two, more ability to focus, to find flow, to work in the moment. When you are doing too much, you are constantly switching from one task to another, constantly interrupted, constantly distracted. Do less, clear away distractions, single task. Three, work has more impact and spreads further and wider. When you do too much, your work is spread thinner, you have lower quality, and people won't spread your work or give you awards for low quality work. Four, more pride in your work, which feels good. Feels awesome, actually, to create something worth putting your name on. Five, people appreciate higher quality. Customers rave, readers enthuse, reviewers glow, bosses promote. Six, more time for family and loved ones. Not a small benefit. Be sure that if you do less, you use the saved time for something important, like quiet time for the ones you love. Seven, more time for other things you enjoy. I use my time for exercise or reading, and of course, my family. And eight, free yourself up to create amazing things. Creating is hard to do when you're busy and distracted. By doing less, you can create something great. How to do less. I almost didn't include this section, as to me it seems obvious. You just do less. But I realize it's not obvious to everyone, so I'll share a few tips. Many are familiar to longtime readers. 
slowly cut back on non-essential commitments. Have fewer meetings. Say no to requests as much as possible so you can focus on doing something great. Cut out distractions, especially the internet. Single task and focus. Churn out a first draft, then edit. Edit some more. Make it beautiful and minimal. Make it something you will be proud to claim credit for. When you find yourself doing busy work, stop. Put it off. Find ways to cut that out of your life. Whatever blocks you from doing your great work, kill it. Set limits on how many things you do each day. Focus on the important tasks first before you get distracted. And set limits on your work hours. It won't happen overnight. Change gradually but surely. Quote, Any intelligent fool can make things bigger, more complex, and more violent. It takes a touch of genius and a lot of courage to move in the opposite direction. End quote. E.F. Schumacher. You just listened to the post titled Eight Ways Doing Less Can Transform Your Work and Life by Leo Babauta of zenhabits.net. And big thanks to Leo. You know, Zen Habits is all about finding simplicity and mindfulness in the daily chaos of our lives. It's about clearing the clutter so we can focus on what's important, create something amazing, and find happiness. The blog has over a million readers and was named one of the top 25 blogs by Time Magazine. And if you enjoy Leo's work, come check out our other shows where we narrate even more of his content uh, since he writes on so many different subjects. You can find all of our shows by searching for Optimal Living Daily wherever you're hearing this, wherever you get your audio, and hit subscribe or follow in the podcast app of your choice to get new episodes daily. Or come by oldpodcast.com to see all the shows that we have, plus much more content. So that's it for another edition of Optimal Startup Daily. Again, I wish you a very happy new year if you're listening in real time, and I'll be right back here with you tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.